This is HRW 98P072, the skier. So we've got two hills. They give us this, the, the height of the hills. A ski run extends between the peaks with a total length of 3.3 kilometers and an average slope of 30 degrees. So we say the skier starts from rest on the highest peak. At what speed will he arrive at the top of the lower peak if he just coasts without using the poles? Ignore friction. Okay, if he coasts, that means he's not applying any more force um, to the equation. And if we're ignoring friction, then friction is not doing a force. That means energy is going to be conserved here. So really, the energy at the top of the first peak is going to equal the energy at the top of the second peak. So I don't know what to call that. Energy of the first peak is going to equal the energy at the top of the second peak. So let's fill these in. Well, the energy at the top of the first peak it says he's he starts from rest, so there's no kinetic energy. Basically, all he's got is the gravitational potential energy. Okay. At the second peak, he still has gravitational potential energy, but he's also moving, so he's going to have kinetic energy. Okie dokie. Um, so the Gravitational at the top of the first peak is going to be mg times the height of the first peak, which is capital H, okay? And potential energy at the top of the second peak is mg times little h, because it's little h high. And kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Well, look already, I got m's in every single uh, term, so I can get rid of them, which is good because they did not give us his mass. Okay, now I want velocity. So let's solve this for velocity. Um, oops, wrong button, here we go. Well, it's in this term and not this term, so let's get rid of this term. Subtract it from both sides. Okay, and I get a G capital H minus G lowercase h equals 1 half V squared. Alrighty, um, let's see, multiply both sides by 2, so we've got 2 times, oh, you know what, I'm already doing parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and pull this G out to the front, so then I just have capital H minus lowercase h over here equals V squared. Alright, so I just square root both sides, and I'm going to get V equals this stuff. So V equals the square root of 2G capital H minus H. Boom. All right. Put in the numbers. Boo, doo, doo. 2 times 9.8. My capital H is 880 meters. Make sure it's in meters. Oh, my thing froze for a second. Ignore that. In fact, go back. Here we go. 180, oops, minus mm, 750, 750, parentheses, put all that in the calculator, and I get, my calculator says 50.47771786, um, remember, you don't want to do all of those, so in this case, they gave us things with, it looks like, uh, three sig, sig figs in this, two sig figs in that, and, oh, we didn't use that, though, so three sig figs, so 50 point, rounded off to five, and that's what they have, 50.5, okie dokie. Now, approximately what coefficient of kinetic friction between snow and skis would make him stop just at the top of the lower peak? This is a slight modification of what we just did, but only very slight. So what we're saying is when we get to the top of the other peak, I shouldn't have any kinetic energy at all, okay? Now, I could, let's see, I could start from scratch. Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to start from scratch. I could jump off of this one, but I think I'm just going to start from scratch. So what am I doing? What color? I don't remember. Okay, well... I know that the energy at the top of the first peak, boom, here's the thing. It should equal the energy at the top of the second peak 
plus the work that was done by friction because we have a little bit of friction here, okay? And we need to know how much of the friction, sorry, how much of the energy was taken away by friction. Actually, probably a better way to write this is that, put this on the other side, the energy at the top of the second peak is equal to the energy at the top of the first peak minus what the friction took away, the work done by friction. That's a better way to write it. So let's do that, okay? So the energy at the top of the first peak, again, he started from rest, so no kinetic energy, but had potential energy at the top, so that would be mg capital H minus, well, the work done by friction is the force of friction times the distance that he went, which they give us. They give us it's 3.3 kilometers. So the distance, um, you know what, I'm just going to put D for now. We'll put the number in later, okay? Equals, well, the energy at the top of the second one, it says we're going to make him stop right at the top. So the kinetic energy would be zero there. That means all of the energy at the top of the second peak is simply the potential energy at the stop top of the second peak. So that's mg little h. All right. Um, I want the coefficient of kinetic friction. That's going to have to do with friction. I'm going to go ahead, before I put more stuff in here, because I, I need to, I'm going to go ahead and move some things around to get the friction term kind of by itself. Um, for instance, I am going to subtract this. Oops, group, group, capital H from both sides. Okay, so I have negative force of friction times the distance that he goes equals mg little h minus mg big H. Okay, then I'm going to multiply by negative 1 everywhere. That just changes all the signs. So this becomes a positive, this becomes a negative, this becomes a positive. Okay, all right, let's put something in for friction. So if you think about the skier, um, free body diagram of the skier. Either way, either both slopes have a, a slope of 30 degrees. So I know th this this diagram is going to be for the his on his way down, but um, mg, but it'll be the same stuff for the way up too. I know it has the normal force on him, and I know he has friction on him. Okay, I'm not going to worry about like this right now, but I do know that he is not accelerating in the direction perpendicular to the slope. If he was, he would sink into the slope or he would levitate off the slope, and that's just not happening. So I know that the normal force has to be equal to the this component of mg. That is adjacent to the angle, so what I have here is I have mg cosine theta, okay? So the normal force, I know that the normal force is equal to mg, oops, cosine theta, because I need these to cancel out, okay? Well, friction is mu times the normal force, so frictional force is mu mg cosine theta. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. So I've got mu mg, come on, cosine theta. And then back I got my d equals. I'm going to go ahead and switch these. I like putting positive things in the front. It's just a thing with me. So I've got mg capital H minus mg lowercase h. Oh, look, I have m's in every term, so they're gone. Yay, because again, we don't know his mass. Okie dokie. Um, now I just need to solve for mu, because that's what I want, approximately what coefficient of kinetic friction is needed. So um, all I've got is mu times a bunch of stuff, so I'm just going to divide by everything. Just divide by everything. Everything that's not mu, sorry. All right, so in the end, what I've got is mu is, oh, look, hey, g is, in all, is, is all over the place, too. 
So I can get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. No G. Hey, no G. Okay. All right. Well, then all that's left is I've got a capital H. Come on. Capital H minus a lowercase h divided by uh, cosine theta times d. I'm going to go ahead and switch those d cosine theta. We tend to put the trig functions at the end of a term for some reason. Um, all right, and then I just have to plug everything in. So h was, capital H, sorry, was 880 meters minus uh, 750 meters. D is 3.3 .3 kilometers. I've got to turn that into meters. So I multiply by 1,000, I get, oops, 3,300 meters um, times the cosine of, what was it, 30 degrees, yep. Okay, plug all that in the calculator. Don't forget that you need these to be together. Okay, plug that all in the calculator and we get, um, I get 0 0.045488, so that rounds to Five, five. Notice you'll know units because it's the coefficient of friction. And that's what we had. So it worked. Yay!